is it finally safe to build a PC? Well, I'm gonna tell you no, and I'm also gonna tell you why. There's something big coming next week. Hey guys, Tiago here. We're back for what seems to be a pretty weekly update at this point. Should you build a PC? Well, like I said in my intro, I don't think you should do it yet, but next week there's something really big coming. And of course, we all know that's gonna be AMD's big Navi GPUs. Specifically, it's gonna be the RX 6800 and the RX 6800 XT. So we're gonna talk about three main things. First, the actual GPUs, the 6800 and the 6800 XT. Second is gonna be stock and availability of all the other components in your system or maybe even competing GPUs like from Nvidia. So first, let's address the GPUs themselves. That's the 6800 and the 6800 XT. Should you even be considering these compared to the Nvidia GPUs? So first, let's talk about the 6800. While I feel this one isn't necessarily the best bang for your buck, I really think the 6800 XT is where the best performance dollar really is gonna be. A lot of people are not gonna have a choice because of limited availability. They're probably gonna have to jump at the 6800, which I'm sure is gonna be available in much larger numbers than the 6800. 6800 XT. Now, both of these GPUs will be launching on November 18th. The time, we really aren't too sure yet. Most of the recent launches seem to be around 9 a.m. Eastern. That's when Ryzen launched, and that's even when the NVIDIA GPUs launched, so I guess maybe it might be something like that, but AMD really hasn't revealed the time yet, so you're just going to have to keep an eye on it. But having said that, the 6800 comes in at $579, and according to AMD's benchmarks that they showed during their presentation, it's beating the 2080 Ti pretty handedly, which already is fairly impressive since the 2080 Ti costs more than double the price of this GPU. Now, the reason why they compared it against the 2080 Ti is that the 3070 just wasn't available yet, but the 3070 was also compared against the 2080 Ti, so we can get a pretty good idea that the RX 6800 certainly is performing better than the 3070 compared to the 2080 Ti, so of course we'll have to wait for third-party benchmarks to see if that's the case, but overall, you can pretty much bet that this GPU is sort of slotted in between the 3070 and the 3080. Basically, it might be something like a 3070 Ti competitor whenever something like that comes out. Seems to be right in the middle in terms of price as well as the performance. Now, a few things that this GPU, along with the 6800 XT, will have up its sleeve. That's going to be the smart access memory. Basically, you're only going to be able to take advantage of this if you pair it with a Ryzen 5000 CPU, something like an X570 motherboard. That means means basically you'll be able to do some settings in BIOS and unlock more frames per second performance, more memory performance from these AMD GPUs. Right now this seems to be exclusive to Ryzen 5000 and AMD Big Navi, but I've also heard recently that Nvidia plans to do some type of similar unlocking with Intel CPUs. This is all very early right now, so we don't really have anything to, to go on in terms of Nvidia, but at least we know that AMD, this is definitely going to be supported right when these GPUs are released. and of According to their benchmarks, seems like you get maybe like a 5 to 10% bump. Definitely a nice performance bump to make sure that it really beats the 3070 and becomes a little more competitive with the 3080, because after all, 579 isn't really the best price. I think the $649 6800 XT really blows the 6800 out of the water, but most people likely will end up with the 6800 just because it's probably going to be more widely available. Now, the 6800 XT is a very interesting GPU because according to AMD's own benchmarks in many games, and now this is going to be their 4K GPU as opposed to the 1440p GPU that the 6800 is, according to AMD's benchmarks, this GPU is either running neck and neck with the 3080 or flat out beating it in different games. Of course, once again, it's going to have rage mode as well as that smart access memory to it. its advantage if you pair with a Ryzen 5000 CPU. In general, looking at the AMD release benchmarks, it seems like it's really going to give the 3080 a run for its money, and that's around $50 cheaper, all that they really have to do to clench the title is just be available, be in stock in enough numbers, and I think a lot of people will certainly go towards it. Now, there are a few things you should know with AMD GPUs. Of course, if you're doing workstation applications, the NVIDIA encoder, especially for video editing, is definitely the best right now. NVIDIA also has much better ray tracing and DLSS technology, a lot more deep learning technologies that they've been refining over the last few years. So, AMD on the software side here is coming in pretty hot, but definitely pretty
pretty new. We don't know how reliable a lot of these overclocking things that they've implemented will be. We have to see how these drivers will be compared to NVIDIA. Traditionally, NVIDIA has had very stable, very powerful drivers, especially for the last few releases. Now, AMD has been known to have some hardware and software issues with their GPUs. So just remember, these are brand new. It's the first time in a long time that AMD is actually competing on the high end. So there certainly may be some BIOS and some growing pains, some things that you're going to have to deal with, some BIOS updates to improve things. I'm sure AMD will get it right eventually, but I think people buying these GPUs should have realistic expectations that there may be some growing pains in the beginning. Maybe some games may have bugs or issues. While NVIDIA, the GPUs have been out and everything seems to be pretty stable. The NVIDIA 3000 series GPUs have been out for a while now, so everything seems to be going pretty smoothly, pretty stable. So we'll be able to tell within the first week or two from people's experiences, from reviews, have the AMD drivers really kept up with the promise of much better hardware? Because once again, if they have powerful hardware, it's not going to matter if the drivers aren't optimized and the hardware is having crashes and things of that nature. So that's going to be something to definitely look out for. But to answer the question, should you wait until next week to see how these GPUs will perform? Absolutely, of course. They already have very promising performance. We know the levels that they're gonna be at. So it's no question that they're gonna at least match those levels. The biggest question here is gonna be, of course, stock and availability. How quickly are they gonna sell out? The Zen 3 launch sold out very quickly, especially for the higher end SKUs. Now the 5600X and some of the more lower end CPUs that came out certainly did seem to be available for a longer period of time than we would be accustomed to at this point. Like it didn't sell out in 30 30 seconds. I saw it up for like 10 to 15 minutes on Newegg. Micro Center had stock as well as some other websites. Now the higher end SKUs like the 5950X certainly sold out very quickly, but we can assume that be the case with lower product availability and very high demand for these CPUs. Now the GPUs, I think are going to be the same thing. I really would urge you guys to be realistic about this. There's an insane amount of demand for these GPUs. I don't think they're going to have enough, just like the PlayStation 5 and the 3000 series GPUs and even Zen 3. It's going to sell out almost instantly. If we're lucky, we'll have a little bit bigger window like maybe we had with the 5600X where for at least a few minutes people are going to have a chance to actually check out without websites crashing. But given that these GPUs are very hyped up in terms of their performance, given that their price is pretty good for the performance they're putting out, um, it's something new from AMD. People really are loving AMD CPUs so they want to pair it with these GPUs. Of course with smart access memory, AMD is giving them reason now to pair everything in one system. And also given the fact that people couldn't get NVIDIA GPUs, I think it's really going to push a lot of people to get these GPUs. So we're going to have to keep an eye on stock and availability. And of course, the second thing we'll keep an eye on is how optimized these drivers will be, how smooth of an experience will be when you actually have the GPU. And then the second thing we're going to talk about is just stock and availability in general. We briefly touched on the Ryzen 5000 Zen 3 CPUs. I really recommend if you're building a new system now, this is really the platform to go with. Ryzen 5000 absolutely blows everything that came before it, not only Intel, but also Ryzen Ryzen 3000 blows it out of the water in terms of gaming performance. Even the 5600X is putting up competitive numbers with like the 10900K. It's a very impressive CPU as well as a really great platform X570. So I'm certainly recommending everybody to go to AMD. Of course, most people know that already. And this is coming from somebody that's used Intel a lot in the past. I have a 10900K, but unfortunately right now they're flat out not competitive. The 10900K up to the last generation was a great great CPU and still continues to be if you have one. But the new Ryzen 5000 CPUs certainly beat it in many cases, not only in gaming, but in multi-threaded applications. They're much more efficient. In general, they're just much better CPUs. So I would keep an eye out on stock. They do seem to be pretty sold out. The 5600X and sometimes the 5800X do seem to occasionally come in stock. So I'll definitely keep an eye on those. But if you're building a system now, I would definitely be a little patient and try to find one of these CPUs in stock because it's definitely worth worth it. And in terms of the stock and availability situation, the NVIDIA GPUs seem to be more or less like they were. Occasionally they do come in stock. In fact, last week I got an email from EVGA. I joined their Q system back in early October. Took about a month, but I eventually got the email that I could get one of the GPUs. So remember, use all the tips that I've told you guys. I'm going to make another launch day video for the AMD GPUs. Just kind of telling you guys the best places to get these sort of some of the tips and tricks I've learned. 
And of course, I think after the initial AMD GPU launch, we're gonna be basically for the next few months in the same situation with the AMD GPUs, not really finding them in stock very readily. You're gonna to have to apply the same tips and tricks to both the AMD GPUs, NVIDIA GPUs, as well as the Zen 3 CPUs, as these are all just in really high demand for the amount that they can produce. But eventually, I think they'll come into more stock, and these certainly are the components you should be looking at if you're building your gaming PC now. Now, what about all of the other components in your system? Stuff like power supplies, the motherboard, RAM. Now, this is another area where I'm gonna tell you to wait because we are so close to Black Friday. Now, Black Friday sales in some places have started a little bit early. And remember to subscribe because leading up to Black Friday, I'm gonna look at all the awesome hardware deals I can find and definitely share them with you guys. But in the meantime, unless you see a really great deal on things like RAM, cases, power supplies, monitors, I would wait a little bit as we get closer to Black Friday because as we saw on Amazon Prime Day, there certainly were some items, not everything, but some things were priced really, really well, especially storage. So I think Black Friday, certainly you'll be able to snag a lot of components for really great prices. Now, don't expect to get any of the newer GPUs or CPUs at any discount prices. Like we mentioned before, they probably won't even be in stock. And if they are, they're going to be at MSRP and maybe even a little higher. And if you do that, you'll certainly be able to build a much faster system for a much better price. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions now below. Remember to subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.